Join us for the Living the Life broadcast on our series, Understanding the Goodness of God with Dr. Chooks Ugohe. Good evening. Welcome to our online masterclass, Understanding the Goodness of God. I am Dr. Chucks Ugoi here. Tonight is episode 275, 275. And the thought we are working on for the last, uh, how many episodes now? Eight episodes, is the goodness of God makes him my helper. Tonight is part nine. The goodness of God makes him my helper. Part nine. All right, I'm going to read uh, John chapter 17. I'm going to read from the New King James Version, and then I'm going to read it from the Amplified Classic Version. John chapter 17, no, no, John chapter 16, sorry. John chapter 16, verse 7. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. All right. Now look at the Amplified Classic. However, I am telling you nothing but the truth. When I say to you, when I say it is profitable, good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, counselor, Helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, standby will not come to you into close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. All right. We're talking about God as our helper. And we had established that uh, the Holy Spirit... The Holy Spirit is the helper of man. He, he, he is called the helper. And Jesus referred to himself as the first helper. And he said that I am sending another helper to you. Uh, in Greek is, the, is, is alos parakletos. Alos parakletos. He, I'm sending another helper to you. And uh, we, we read in, in this place... Uh, a few things. Number one, he said that it is profitable. It is more advantageous. It's more expedient that I go so that when he, so that he can be sent because as long as I'm with you, he cannot be sent. And so what is it about this, this helper, which is the second helper? Remember, Jesus is the first helper. What is it about this second helper that makes Jesus say that it's actually more advantageous, it's more profitable. He, his coming is more profitable. And this is what it is. The first helper, Jesus, was God with us. And he couldn't be God in us. He was God with us. So that's Emmanuel, God with us. So he lived with the disciples. He could help them he could help them with things on the outside. So he could, he could solve problems for them. He could defend them from, from whatever Satan was planning and all that. He, he could do that. You know, he made food available. He made, turned water into wine at the wedding before, you know, the couple had to be embarrassed. You know, he healed the sick. He raised the dead. He did all of those things as a helper who is with us. But now the second helper that he is asking the father to send is, is at a higher level. That's why he says it's more profitable for you that I go away. Because when I go away, then he can come. Why is the second helper, the Holy Spirit, at a higher level? Because he is with you, just like Jesus was, but now he is in you. Oh, yeah, yeah. He is with you and in you. He is in, with us and in us. So he is a helper on the outside, a helper on the inside, a helper on the outside, a helper on the inside. So he is able to do everything that Jesus did. Oh, yeah. Everything that Jesus did, 
He is able to heal the sick. He is able to, to raise the dead. He is able to deliver the oppressed. He is able to cast out demons. He's able. That's the Holy Spirit with us on the outside. But again, he goes beyond God with us to become God in us. Hallelujah. Yeah. God in us. The Holy Spirit is God in us. That is what Jesus was referring to when Jesus said it, he, he, it is more profitable. It's more advantageous. This one is superior. He's, the ministry of the second helper is superior to the ministry of the first helper. The ministry of the second helper includes the ministry in us. In us. So what is he doing in us? What does he, what, 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 what's his work? What's his function in us? We understand his work with us, helping us with, you know, all the challenges and the, and the, uh, 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 I don't want to say vicissitudes of life. He, you know, but yes, th that is included. But all the things that we have to deal with externally, then he now also helps us internally. Okay, and and, and, what, and what, what, what are we talking about? The Allos Paracletus. Let me spend a moment to talk about that. Because when you read different versions of the Bible, that's why I, I went to the Amplified Classic. You know, some versions will say, like this um, New King James said, if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. Some version of the Bible say the counselor will not come to you. Some version of the Bible say some, the comforter will not come to you. And they are all translating the same word, paracletos. So, so only the Amplified gave us the full range of all the words that can be translated from paracletos. And the... the, 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 the the, the words listed here is comforter, counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, standby. Standby, like you have a standby generator. So when, when you know, power fails, you put in the standby. The Holy Spirit is the standby. <laughs> when, when your strength fails or your courage fails if you have the helper he kicks in he kicks in because he is coming into you look at what he says i will send him to you i will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you to be in close fellowship with you so this is what makes him his ministry as it were superior to the first helper. This is why Jesus said it is more profitable. Because he is in close fellowship with you. He lives in you and he is outside of you and he is inside of you. So, so his ministry uh, of, of helping or the ministry of the paracletos, the one called alongside to help, it includes comforting, it includes counseling, helping, advocating, interceding, strengthening, and being a standby. Ha, ah, this is powerful. So, so the paracletus, the Holy Spirit, is doing all of these functions for us. All of these things is what he is to us, and much more, and much more. So, so let's, let's understand what's going on. Look at this scripture in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. You know, uh, if, you, if you came from the you know, regular Orthodox church, this is how you know, we, we always ended the service by reciting this verse. And we say, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship or the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. We normally would declare that before we end fellowship. But I want to highlight something there. The communion of the Holy Spirit. The communion of the Holy Spirit. 
the communion of the Holy Spirit. This is why he was sent to commune with us, to talk to us on a daily, ongoing basis. He says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The communion of the Holy Spirit is supposed to be with you 24-7. Why? Because he is in you. So we are supposed to receive that ministry of the Holy Spirit communion with you, of telling you things, of being in touch with you 24-7, of being in fellowship with you. We are supposed to be conscious of him 24-7. That consciousness of, of his presence 24-7 is what creates that communion, that exchange, that, you know, fellowship, deep, intimate fellowship. That's what communion is, deep, intimate fellowship. And we're supposed to have it 24-7. In other words, it is in, the, in this communion that we're able to draw counsel. We're able to draw help. We're able to draw advocacy or his capacity to announce he is your advocate. He's the one that announces us. He's the one that announces you. You know, he can announce your business. He can announce your ministry. He can announce your, your offering, whatever it is. He is your advocate. He is your intercessor. He prays for you. Okay? He, and, and, and then he is your strengthener. He's the one who strengthens you when you don't know uh, where strength is going to come from, when you don't know whether you're going or coming. He's the one who strengthens you. And then he is your standby. So, so he is your backup. He, is, he stands there. So this is what makes us uh, uh, want to develop this deep intimacy with the Holy Spirit. So that we can draw, in communion with him, we can draw all these all this, um, uh, qualities, all these blessings, all these functions that, that he offers. And you know the way it is. If you don't know that he offers a function to put your faith to draw it, you will never be able to draw it. If you don't know that he is the strengthener of your body and the strengthener of your mind, you will not be able to draw strengthening from him. You know, you know the Bible says in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, you see, if he dwells in you, he will quicken your physical body. He will quicken your mortal body. There is a work of quickening. To quicken means to give life. To quicken means to revive, to quick life, to give life. So, so part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to quicken our physical body, is to give it life, is to strengthen it so that you are forever, your youth is forever renewed is to quicken your physical body. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But if you don't know that this is part of his assignment in your life, you will not release your faith to draw from it. And this is why, you know, a lot of the ministry of the helper, the lot of the ministry of the paracletos is not being enjoyed and, and, and benefited from by the body of Christ because people don't know that he is offering the same. So because they don't know, ignorance stops them from releasing their faith to draw what he offers. Because remember that he that comes to God, the Holy Spirit is God. He that comes to God must believe that he is. So if you don't know that God offers something, you, you will not release your faith to, to, to receive what he's offering. And, and, and there's nothing God is going to do about it. You need to come. This is why ignorance is terrible. Ignorance is terrible. You know, Bible says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Ignorance is terrible. If you don't know that you have a resource, you don't know that you have a, a, you know, a, a particular blessing, you can't draw from it. You can't pull that blessing. And the enemy will rob you. And you'll be destroyed. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So if you don't know, you will release your faith. This is why we are going through this teaching. Please know that he is your comforter. So if you are grieving, if you are stressed, if you are distressed, if you are, you know, provoked sore, you can, you can choose to lean on him and draw comfort. He's your comforter. 
He is the one that comforts you. He is your counselor. Meaning that, meaning that <laughs> you, you, you have a superior uh, source of counsel to guide you in decision making. To guide you in critical junctions of life. He is our counselor. He is our helper. He is our advocate. All of these qualities require faith from you to be able to receive it. Hallelujah. So, so look at what the Holy Spirit does. This Holy Spirit, his ministry for humans actually starts when you are non-believer. Let me explain this. When you are non-believer, and let, let, let's go to John 16 verse 8. Let's go to John 16 verse 8. John chapter 16, verse 8. He says, And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. Many people say the Holy Spirit convicts the believer of sin. No, he doesn't. <laughs> the Holy Spirit does not talk about sin to the believer. He convicts the world, the world, the world, the world, not the believer, the world. The, the church is not the world. The world is not the church. The, the world is, is humanity without Christ. Humanity still left in sin. That's the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. So he has come and he will convict the world of sin. The Holy Spirit does not talk to you about your sin. When they say, ah, the Holy Spirit, you know, convicted me of my sin. No, the Holy Spirit doesn't talk to you about your sin. He talks to the world about sin. Why doesn't the Holy Spirit talk to you about sin? Because you're a believer. Your sins are forgiven. And God keeps no record of wrongs. <laughs> God keeps no record of wrongs because God is love. So he's not keeping a record of your wrongs. So what, what, what is he going to be using to, to remind you of your sin? or to talk? To? He has no record of it. So it's only the world that he convicts of their sin because they are still in sin. So he brings a conviction of that sin. He, 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 he highlights their consciousness to the sin and the, and, the, and the horribleness of the sin so that they can repent. He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So this is his ministry to the unsaved people, to the world. He starts with the world convicting them of sin and talking to them about righteousness and of judgment. He does that. Now, if somebody hearkens to the voice of the Spirit, and gives their life to Christ. And in other words, they repent of their sin. They accept the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross as enough atonement for their sin. Once they do that, the Holy Spirit's ministry changes. So he's no longer, you know, fussing about sin. His ministry changes when now you are a saved person. When now you are born again and you are now in the kingdom, his ministry changes. What, does, what, what are the things that he begins to focus on? We, we said that he is in you. He is with you and in you. In you, he begins to develop the fruit of the Spirit. He begins to work on your character. You know, the Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, he says, Verse, yeah, verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Now, these are the expressions of the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit is, is a byproduct, I mean, is a product that comes from a tree or a plant. So, so there is a process that produces fruit. A fruit doesn't just show up. There's a process that produces it. So, so the Holy Spirit is processing us to produce the fruit, his fruit called the fruit of the Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit. So, so his work in you is producing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and all of those. In other words, he is working on your character. He is transforming you. He is taking away selfishness and transforming you into the image of the Son of God. He is working on you. Now, okay, so he is transforming your character. That's his work in us, okay? So, so he is helping to mold you on the inside and reconfigure you 
and you know change the way you look at life change the way you respond to life that's the work of the holy spirit on the inside that's not all romans chapter 8 verse 11 the bible says that he is quickening so 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 he is transforming your character and then he's quickening your body He's quickening your body. The Bible says, the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead, if he dwells in you, he shall quicken your mortal body. So he's quickening your body. He's adding life to your body. He's taking mortality out and, and replacing it with immortality and with the life of God. Now, now, by the same token, you need to agree with the work of quickening. You need to agree with the work of quickening. You need to release your faith for the work of quickening to be facilitated in your life, the quickening of your physical body. So if you don't know that this is one of the things that the Holy Spirit was sent to do, you will not cooperate with him. And, and you will be going contrary to his, to his agenda and his desire. His desire is that this mortal body be quickened and made alive so that mortality will be swallowed by immortality. This is the work of the Spirit. And I'm saying to you now that from now, over the next 10 years, maybe 15 years, or even less, the Spirit of God is going to be working more and more in the physical body of believers. Why? Because believers now will release their faith for the work of quickening. Believers will now release their faith for the work of quickening, to resist sickness, to resist death, to resist, to resist bodily trauma, to resist... Uh, um, 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 aging. Because the Spirit of God is supposed to renew you. The Bible says, He satisfies my mouth with good things that my youth is renewed like the eagles. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing in you. So He's changing your character. He is refreshing your body. He's quickening your body. He's taking away mortality. He's taking away aging. He's taking away stress. He is quickening your body. He is healing you of diseases. Remember in, in that Psalm 103 he says that he's the one who heals all our diseases. The Holy Spirit is God and he heals all our diseases. So he's doing that work in you and you need to agree with it. You need to release your faith and empower that work and facilitate that work or quickening in your body. You know, you know, the church is waiting for the rapture to happen. But can I tell you something? The rapture is not going to happen until we begin to embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit to our bodies. The Holy Spirit is doing a work of quickening to your body. So, so he's helping you in that direction. He's helping you in that, in that uh, manner. He's helping you in that department to, to quicken your body. So you now need to agree with the work of quickening. You need to agree with the work of quickening, but the Holy Spirit, and then the work of quickening will be expedited. But if you don't know that he's supposed to quicken you and you're not releasing your faith for that, you will be going for something that, you know, that is contrary to, to what God wants. And this is why the, the, the church has been dying. Because the, we're not receiving the ministry of the Holy Spirit to quicken, but he is in us to quicken us. He is in us to transform our character. So if you're not releasing your faith for the Spirit's work of transformation of character to progress and proceed, you will, you will miss out on the transformational work of the Spirit. It's all part of why he was sent. This is why Jesus said it is advantageous. It is more profitable. It is more beneficial that I go away. Because when I was with you, I can't do the work of changing you on the inside. But when he is coming, he will be with you and he will be in you to do the work of transformation and to do the work, the work of transformation of character and the transformation of the mortal body to, to, to a life-carrying body. Hallelujah. And it is when, listen, you know what we call the rapture? Let me tell you what the rapture is. The rapture is when a critical mass in the body of Christ, the critical mass in the body of Christ, are, are, are now releasing their faith for the quickening of their body. And when that faith is released in mass, the quickening will happen. And the Bible says, in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. That's the rapture. We shall all be changed. So the rapture 
the 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 pace. No, there's an English word I'm looking for. The 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 speed with which the rapture will happen is determined by how much the church embraces the help ministry of the Holy Spirit when it comes to the work of quickening the body. So the more people that get to hear this message and begin to receive the quickening of the Spirit on the body, the more we bring ourselves closer to the close of the age. Yes. And if we don't understand it and, and, and you know, um, throw our, our, our faith behind what he is offering us, it delays. This is why the end has not come yet. People are not taught to believe the Holy Spirit to do the work of quickening in their body. But the more and more, no, listen, there are over 8 billion people on the planet. If more than 8 billion people are now releasing their faith for a quickening, the rapture will happen in a few days from now. Yes. The rapture will happen a few days from now or a few weeks from now. Because it is the collective Quick, uh, rece receiving of the ministry of the Holy Spirit as a quickener, as a quickener, we receive that help, that 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 you know blessing. Then the the end will come. So this is why it's important that you share this message, so that the message can go around, so that more and more believers will begin to come into consciousness of the ministry of the Spirit as a transforming agent for our character and a transforming agent for our bodies. Hallelujah. So, how are we supposed to, you know, um, relate with the Holy Spirit intimately? We need to receive him as helper and comforter. As helper and comforter. So, anytime you are stressed, anytime you are uh, disenfranchised, anytime, you know, you are in a negative in a negative state of mind or a negative state of emotion, this is where you say, Holy Spirit, come and help me. Comfort me. Take away the grief and replace it with joy. That's what he does. Take away the pain and replace it with gladness. That's what he does. Okay, so we receive his ministry as our helper and comforter. In, 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 in the next one, in John 16, verse 13. John 16 Verse 13, the word says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truths. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. So, so the, there's a ministry of the Holy Spirit as our teacher and as our guide. As our teacher, as our guide. In John 14, 26, he says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So he is our teacher. So when we begin to receive his ministry as teacher, receive his ministry as a guide, we, 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 are, we are drawing from the resources that he brought and we are bringing the end closer. Hallelujah. So, so the next is we... We, we receive his ministry as the revealer of God's purpose and everything that God has made available to us. John 16, verse 14. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. That's his ministry. He will take of what is mine and declare it to you and impart it to you and shower you with it. Hallelujah. This is part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, to reveal the Father's purpose and reveal everything God has made available to us so that we can take advantage. Hallelujah. The next ministry of the Holy Spirit, 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. He is the anointing within us and he is the anointing upon us. 1 John Chapter 2, verse 27. He says, But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you, concerning all things, and is true, 
and it's not a lie. And just as he has taught you, you will, you will abide in him. Hallelujah. So, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He is the one who, the anointing that is with us and the anointing that is upon us. He said here, the anointing will teach you all things that you need to know. That's his ministry. May we receive him to teach us all that we need to know. The Bible says in John, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went about doing good and healing them that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So the same shall be said of me and you. We went about doing good and healing them that were oppressed of the devil, for God, for the Holy Spirit is on us. In, in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, we see another ministry of the Holy Spirit. In this, in this uh, uh, passage, he is, he is our prayer helper. He is our prayer helper and our intercessor and our partner. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So this is, this is powerful. He is our prayer partner. He is our prayer guide. He's our prayer helper. And we need to draw that help from him when we are in prayer so that we can pray right and pray well. All right? The last one is... John 15, verse 15. John 15, verse number 15. John 15, verse number 15. All right, I read it. He says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. Verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. 17, these things I commend you, that you love one another. 18, if the world hates you, you know that he hated me before he hated you. So, the, the Holy Spirit brings God's intimate presence with him. And he gives, he makes it available to us. And we, we, we draw from that and become carriers of the presence of God. I pray that you will, you will listen to this teaching again and begin to draw all these resources and all these blessings and all these capabilities and all these things that the Holy Spirit is bringing to you, you know, don't just take him as your counselor. He is your helper in prayer. He is your defender. He is your advocate. He is, my goodness, he is all of these things. He's your strengthener. He's your standby. So, so when you learn all of these things that he offers and begin to draw from them and begin to place a demand, you grow in intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I pray that the Lord bless you and that the Lord help you to cultivate deeper relationship with his spirit. That you come into a personal, a personal deep one-on-one -on -one relationship with his spirit. God bless you. I'll see you um, next week as we continue in the series of understanding the goodness of God. And tomorrow is Ask Your Gaini. And we will be, in, sorry. Tomorrow is, no, no, tomorrow is not Ask Your Gaini. Tomorrow is the Power of Woman broadcast. The, the amazing Power of Woman broadcast is tomorrow, and we will be sharing some powerful things. But until then, good night. God bless you. Listen to this teaching again. I'll see you at next time. There comes a time in your life when you need a change, an upgrade. You need upliftment. You need lasting results. You just want your life to be real. You need your life to be meaningful, deep, full, purposeful and easy. You're looking for enlargement, amplification, increase,
strengthening. You're looking for growth in your life. You want leverage, strategic advantage, gain and favor, ability to influence, clout and strength. Join us at Resurrection Life Church every Sunday. Visit our website .reslife.org.za for more information. Make this year your year of being real. Embrace rapid enlargement and leverage. It is your time.